across the sea of character sheets, deep in the forest of D20s lies the mountain of source books. Welcome to the mountain of source books. We hope you enjoyed your climb. My name is Jeffrey Vincent Dale, and this is my co-host. Hey there, everyone. You can call me Teach. This is our first episode. We're just kind of talking about what is this podcast. We are a tabletop RPG discussion, review, and actual play podcast. That means that we will be talking about, reviewing, and playing various tabletop role-playing games. For those that do not know, a source book is any book for a tabletop RPG that relates to supplemental materials that add on to a game's core rules. You'll notice that we probably won't be using a ton of source books on the show, but the name rolled off the tongue way better than the Mountain of Rule Books. And the Mountain part of the title is in reference to how we have way too many tabletop RPGs just sitting around waiting to be played. Now that you know what we're all about, let us introduce ourselves. Teach, why don't you go first? So again, my name is Teach. A little bit about myself. I don't play a lot of tabletop games. I have been playing since college, so that's about six-ish years. Actually, it's more like eight. Anyway, favorite RPG of mine. I can't remember the name of it, but it had something to do with heroes. Basically, you would have a negative characteristic for every good characteristic of your hero. The GM would lead you on a mission from there. The level of creativity my friends and I came up with was just absolutely fantastic. Someone played a Firefox that was allergic to herself. So every so often we had to roll saves to see if her fire sneeze would hurt us. Uh, my favorite character that I've ever played was from that particular session. I made a healer slash mad scientist that lacked an attention span. So my two good characteristics were my amazing ability to heal physical wounds and mental damage, which was really important for this particular session. My flaw was that I had a short attention span, so if someone from the party didn't use part of their turn to check on me, I would wander off and start fires. I burned down an entire forest in the game. I really need to play that again. Good times. Yeah, we'll see if we can figure out what that game was and, and, and revisit it at some point. We could probably just, I don't know, wing it. Make a game. We have masks. We could probably do something pretty similar to that in masks. Potentially. Yeah, so my name is Jeffrey Vincent Dale. My experience with the tabletop is a bit more extensive. I started with Pathfinder. Jesse, who you'll be meeting a little bit later on, tried to adapt Baldur's Gate, the video game, into a tabletop campaign. And it didn't end up working out. But we ran a few sessions of that. Since then, I ran and played in Cubicle 7's Doctor Who RPG, the first edition. We did that for about two years. I played a little bit of Fiasco. I spent about, I think about a year playing in a homebrew Pokemon RPG where I played an aspiring ghost-type gym leader. That was a lot of fun. We managed to make it all the way through our campaign there. We're currently working on recording Monster of the Week, and I've really been enjoying that. Uh, and yes. then I've done quite a bit of D&D &D 5e. Favorite RPG? Like I said, we're still recording it, but I really like Monster of the Week. I definitely prefer more rules-light systems. As a DM, it is way easier easier to keep track when I have less to keep track of. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love the simplicity of it. I love the way that the rules sort of more solidly encourage roleplay. My favorite character that I've played, my 5e character, Urzad Bloodfang. He is a vampire, pirate, turtle, swashbuckler, rogue. That's a mouthful. Yes, I had to write it down. <laughs> But yeah, I, personality wise, I based them off of Rex from the Mass Effect video games. Just the sheer number of weird elements to the character just makes them really fun to play. Uh, hi, I'm Jesse and or Jess and or Jim Jamboree or Jupiters or something like that. It's fine. Those those are just some names I go by. A lot of them. All right, and speaking of a lot of them, what RPGs have you played? Oh no! How long do we have? 
Well, I started with D&D, went on to a lot of World of Darkness stuff in particular, played a long-running McTon game, just a lot of indie games mostly. I really liked Masks, but we never actually got to play it. <laughs> Maybe one of these days. One of these days, someday. My favorite game is Mage of the Ascension, because it is a game that basically is philosophy of the game, but also weird, nonsensical, magical stuff, and just far and away way too trippy and supernatural to even make sense to anyone. And there's also a game that is so obtuse that nobody will play it with me. And then my favorite character that I played was in said Mechton game. It was Rose. My kind of describe her a trans space witch, I guess. Okay. It was a long running character who it's really hard to get a bead on what her deal was because she kind of had like three or four different memories, most of them fake, and was basically constantly being like rewritten and changed over the course of her lifetime over like centuries. So it's a really weird, bizarre thing to talk about because I even I don't like I played her for multiple years and even I don't have a grasp on her. But she's the longest running character. Also, she had a fake Scottish accent that was a pain to do. <laughs> hey, everyone. My name's Steve. I played a few different RPGs, maybe not as much as everyone else, but I played D&D 3.5, D&D 5. I played Exalted. And I played a lot of RPGs based off sci-fi TV shows, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, a few other sci-fi shows. The funny thing is I have never watched any of those sci-fi shows. <laughs> My favorite RPG probably is the uh, D&Ds. I really like fantasy. My favorite character I've played and why is during one of the Exalted games, I played this like drug dealer, scummy guy. And I just, in every mission, I was trying to just find new contacts. And, like, trying to, like, buy and sell things wherever I could go. So whenever we had a mission to go to a new town, I'd be like, okay, I'm just going around and trying to find who I could talk to and who I could sell stuff to. And my (laughs) host was trying to make a ton of money. So when I was playing, just had some underlings, and I was always trying to, like, bribe them to work for me instead. So that was my favorite character. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) All right, yeah. As I said before, we're going to be starting with Monster of the Week. You can find episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Just search Mountain Sourcebooks. And with all of those, if you could follow, like, and subscribe, that would help us out a ton. Raises our visibility and makes it easier for people on those various platforms to find us. We'll make sure to include links to all of those in our show notes to make it easier for you to find. We have a Twitch channel. The plan right now is that on October 7th, I will be playing through the game Control. Teach, do you know what you will be playing? I'll be streaming things, more of the relaxing nature. Come and relax with Teach on our live stream Twitch. All right, yeah, and with all that said, thank you for listening and careful on your way back down the mountain. Bye, guys. Bye.